Now, this week, guys, this week what we've done, well, this week we haven't done anything yet because we haven't been here yet. Um, last week we looked at related rates. We've done three full days of related rates problems. We had the intro when we went over the midterm that one day. Okay. Again, this is after school. It's not Wednesday. It's after school Tuesday, really. Um, this week you guys worked. Today we're going to look more at related rates again. Today after school we're going to look at a new topic called linearization differentials. Okay. It's not a tough topic, actually. It's very easy compared to the rest of the stuff we've ever done. And you'll see it really is. All you're using is a derivative once in a while. But it's very simple. Okay. And we're going to also study that tomorrow. The problem is this. I plan to have assessments on Friday. But Friday, it's like 15-minute classes. Because we have mass in the morning, and then we have Don Bosco Olympics on afternoon. Yeah. So they're literally 15-minute like classes. So I'm not going to have an assessment on Friday. Okay, So on Friday, we'll find something to do. But again, what this does to us is this. It pushes back the assessments we still have to do. So again, remember, we still have to do um, curve sketching, optimization and related rates those three things w w once we do a little more of this we'll talk about this but it's only going to really take today after school and tomorrow to go over this topic it's a short topic and i think you'll find it pretty interesting the applications of it okay it's used a lot with machinery and making stuff um so what that means is that on monday what i'd like to do on monday you guys don't work i'd like to review curve sketching optimization and related rates one of each problem okay so that we can have an assessment on tuesday so if you want to write that down right now, next week on Tuesday. So there's no after school next week on Tuesday. It's not three constants. What's off Friday? Are you talking about the calendar? The after school calendar? Yeah. The X's mean there's no class, actually. They're not off by day. I know. I fixed it on the newer calendar. Here, I'll show you what I mean. I know. I realize it's it, it looks like it's off. I know. I'll show you why. When I originally made the calendar, <coughs> thank you. I put an X in the spot. That meant you didn't have class. That didn't have class. But no, no, no. That, that, it's correct. But I redid the calendar to make it look better. Where is it? AP parent letter. On. I made it myself. Oh, she has it right here. I know, but I made a new one. I want to show you the new one. That's what I'm looking for. Not new, but I made it look different. Where is it? Look for after school calendar. Does anybody see this? I know. It doesn't work that well. Yeah, see, now it's pulling up references to the word school everywhere. If I use quotes in my work, but I don't know the exact name of the file. Let's try this. I got a better idea. There we go. There's the parent letter, Spanish, calculus, syllabus. Oh, you know what? I'll just pull it up in here. Okay. I made a parent letter for your parents a long time ago that still hasn't been sent out. So <laughs> not for my choice, guys, trust me. It would have been out. It would have been out at the beginning of the year, but other reasons caused it not to be. So anyway, what you see in your calendar were a bunch of X's, right? So you see an X here, you see an X here, you see an X here. That just means there's no class. That's what you see on your calendar. I realized afterward that a lot of people didn't understand what that meant and I thought that was stupid actually. So instead I wrote the word class when you had class. So this week is the thirtieth. So we have class this week. We're math. Okay? Next week, which is the 6th, we don't have class. That's that's empty now. So you're going to see an X on next week. Okay? So no class next week. No class next week. Yeah. You want to see the dates of classes, you can just go run, run down this thing and add the numbers. One, one. So you could do 31st of January. February 14th, we have class. February 21st, we have class. 21st. It's always, these are all the Mondays. Sorry, these are the Mondays of the week. We're Tuesday. Guys, look at the heading. Yeah. Week of, week of. Not that, because look, I couldn't do it. How could I write everybody's date now, right? Logically? So anyway, this is, again, the 31st. This would be the 14th, the 21st of February, the 7th of March, 14th of March. That's the 7th of March. Do we have a class this week? Yes, we do. We have today. Yeah, that was the problem. 
Maybe I went crazy. Let's see. March, March, March. February. So hold on. March, February. March. I know. I've seen oh, 6, 13, 20, 27. Uh, so it should be 5, what is that? 12. <laughs> oh, man. The dates? All right. So these should all be. I don't think that matters. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Sure. I thought you would roll on the days. Kind of does matter, but. What is it? What I mean, it doesn't really matter. Cause no, it really matter. doesn't, but it does. Well, yeah. you come to class or you don't come to class, basically. It's like we know where the week of. We don't come to class, it's not our fault. Here it is. Here's the original. Sorry, I found it now. Now that we don't need it, of course. Um, so this should be the fifth, right? Oh, yeah. One day. This should be the twelfth year? And then April, is that correct? Should April be the 4th instead of the 3rd? What's Monday of the 1st April? The 1st Monday in April? What is it? 2nd. 2nd. Oh, I went yeah. up and set it down. And then is May 1st actually a Monday? No, it's going to be April 30th. May 1st and Tuesday. Yeah. That'll never happen, you know that. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. So, again, we got the 14th, the 21st, the 6th of March, the 13th of March. It's always Tuesday, obviously. The 13th of March, 27th of March, 27th of March. 3rd of April. April Fool's is on a Sunday. Oh, 3rd of April. 17th. 24th. Just go down your Tuesdays. Every third Tuesday you're off pretty much. Two on, one off. Two on, one off. Two on, one off. Two on, one off. That's it. No, no. no. After the AP exam, we're not going to have school anymore. Okay, they didn't get to the night. So we could get one more weekend, actually, yeah. No, but your AP, your AP exam is on Wednesday of that week. That's why I don't have to take to school. Where's the week of April 30th is this week? So the next class would be on the eighth, but you have the AP exam on the ninth. We know we don't have school next week Friday, Grace. We don't. We have school next week Friday. We don't have school next week Friday. There's a Friday coming up, and you don't have it. It's the Friday of President's Weekend. It's the one after 17th. Not next Friday, but the Friday. You got a four-day weekend. That is awesome. And we come back, and there you go. You get a four-day weekend. I don't get a four-day weekend. What is it? Like your two-day weekend? Fun. Is that weird? All right. Friendship game. You're going to enjoy it. Stop, guys. Where is he going? You all right? Anybody have any idea what just happened? Uh, yeah, it's a long story. Is he okay? Yeah, uh, I think he's really happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did he like go home for a few days? And <laughs> <laughs> what? This is in a dream. <laughs> okay, let's do some more plans for a later race. Now, yeah. Karen sent me an awesome link. And I thought I might share with you guys. I want to share something with you too. I already emailed you back, but I'll show you. In the link she sent me. Are you encouraging her to be online during the. <laughs> she sent this to me when she researched that at home. I emailed her back. Now, the, the thing she looked up was she, I'm guessing you Google related race problems or something like that? Okay. And I came across this myself. That's the email I wrote back to you saying I've already seen this. Now, the author that wrote this has actually written in almost an entire book. And he doesn't offer all of his chapters, though. He only lets you see some of the chapters. But if you want to see the chapters, you can do it. All you got to do is go up to the top and change the number. You can't actually find the hyperlink on his website. But if you go up and press 7 and hit enter, it brings up the previous chapter. It'll, it'll load. It's loading on the bottom. And the previous chapter, I think, is optimization, I think. Come on, load. One more. <laughs> ah, position velocity. But see? So, the author doesn't put all of his textbook pages up because I think he sells the textbook. 
But it's available online. This is not illegal. You can simply just change the hyperlink up here. Change it to a six, change it to a five, and you'll see all the other chapters too. Okay, I'll post this link tonight. Anyway, back to the problem here. Where did you write? The end of it? You were yeah. saying there was a problem toward the end? No, that way. That way you can There's better diagrams in general? Oh, that's what you're talking about. So, okay, Let, let's take a look at some diagrams so we can see more realistically. The, we can't, yes. The problem here is where you have an inverted cone and the volume is changing. And we've had problems where it says the volume is increasing at a rate of 2 centimeters cubed per minute. Okay? That's like this, where water is being inserted into here, the water is flowing in, and the volume level is going up. This is like your initial height of 100. This is your height at any point in time. The height is changing, so you're going to have a DHDT. The radius is right here, but the radius will change. You'll have a DRDT. So this is where these kind of problems come in. That's what they look like. It's an initial condition only. You're only going to use this. You're only ever going to use your initial conditions when you're trying to relate the radius and the height. The radius and the height. So that you can then plug it in later on to get rid of one of those variables. So here you would say the radius is going to be 500, 50 hundredths of the height, which is one half, obviously. But again, if the height is 100, the radius is half of that. See that? So what are they related by a factor of one half? So the radius is really half of the height. So you're going to use this relationship in your equation later on so that when you differentiate, you only have one variable. Similar to optimization technique. When we use the constraint, this is your constraint. I was confused. I was like, is the H like the original one or is the H the one that they say? It's not. Like, and you're exactly right. It's not. This is the original H here. And then later on, the problem, you might say, find DHDT when H equals 80. So you're looking for DHDT at this water level, 80. And 100 will be at the top. This might be 50 here. So the problem later on will give you another H. When it's on the diagram, or it tells you the geometry of the actual shape itself, that's using this. OK? It's only using this. Homework. Remind me, what, what problems did I give you for your homework? Five, 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 five and eight. 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 Thank you. Five was, five was harder than eight, I agree. The volume ones are easier than the latter ones. I really think they are, personally. So this one they were asking, like, look at the other example, and that one was asking for, like, the BX, and this one's asking for, like, the beta. The angle change. Yeah. We did one of those, too. Yeah. Different example. But I'll go through it still. All right. Um, we did. I know we did. I'm just not sure which... Which topic it was? Or which province? Oh, it was so good. So it sounded on the right. Now, this is a good problem. It says. What do you know? Jazz. Was that 10th grade? Yeah, it was young. It wasn't in the summer, though. It was during the regular year. It was like a We dressed the same one day. This is like the fifth day. This man always wearing purple. And I decided to wear purple one day. Guys, the odds of you having the same color are pretty high, actually. No, no, no. I mean, there's only seven colors in the spectrum, and there are about 350 yeah, students. There's like hundreds of colors. You know why? But it's only shades. two people. So you know what? You don't have the same color. They're not the exact same color. No, his is lighter by a little bit. Look, his is darker by a little bit. Hers is. He's red. You're not purple. What color? What is it? Fuchsia? I don't know. No. Yeah. That's a like That's a Magenta? No, that's not red. Magenta? 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 A ladder, 20 feet long, rests against the wall. The angle between the bottom of the ladder and the ground, called theta, decreases by 2 degrees per second. Hey, no radians for this problem. No radians. 
How, fa how fast is the bottom of the ladder sliding away from the wall when theta equals 30 degrees? Hint. How can we represent the distance between the wall and the bottom of the ladder in terms of theta? So we'll need Sokotola. Convert degrees to radians first. Double answer. Okay? Again, it's not, it's not difficult to convert to radians. It's just you have to remember it. Okay? And you know all 30. 30 is easy. Pi over 6. You should know that one right away. And this is just pi over 9. I forgot what the rule. Okay. Not pi over 9. Yeah, pi over 9. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look. We got a ladder. Here's our diagram. Here's a wall. Length. Length. Problem. To ladder. Or just like ground length. From wall. Wall some of those ground length. Ah, there she is. Hey, Rosie. How are you? Hi. Rosie, everybody has upset that you weren't here, so now we're all much happier. Thank you for coming. Okay. <clears throat> we also told the ladder is 20 feet long. So please, immediately, just put a 20 here. Is the length of the ladder ever going to change? Yes. It's not an adjustable ladder. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it would say an adjustable ladder. What do you have? You could have, you could have that. And you could have the there. Where this is the length of S, and it would change. You could have that. Anyway, the ladder is 20 feet. It rests against the wall. The angle between the bottom of the ladder and the ground, called theta, decreases. Decreases. So the derivative will be negative. So d theta dt, you want to think of it as negative 2 degrees per second. But I don't want degrees. What do I want? Radians. Radians. I was going to say that. Okay. I didn't think it would just me. Okay. So this will be pi over 90 here. Again. Pi over 90. It will be negative. Very good, sir. So there's my related rate already. Okay, there's one of my related rates. Next. I need to call the length of the ground. Sorry, from the wall to the ladder something. What do I call this? X or leg. Sure, but variably, sorry. Leg, yes. Leg, leg, I'm not X and y. y. So call that X, call that Y, please. What theorem might we use? Pythagorean theorem and what else? Sokotoa. Very good. Those two things. Again, we need Pythagorean theorem and we're going to need Sokotoa. Because here's what you're going to see. Do you even need a calculus to solve this problem? You do. You have to take the derivative. It says rates, right? Rates. How fast is the bottom of the ladder sliding away from the wall? What is it asking for? How fast. How fast is this length changing? Dx, dt. Okay? Those are my rates right there. This is R for rates. Now, I still haven't figured out my givens because I really have to think about the fact that I have x, y, and 20. So you know what? I'm going to go right to my equation. But I'm going to notice once I do this that there will be a little bit of a problem. And I'll stop there and show you why. We're going to need the substitute. Very good, Karen. So again, here, differentiating our equation first, we start with x squared plus y squared equals 400. Does it matter no. what this number is here? No. How come? Because it's changing. When you differentiate, it's not changing. This is asking us to take the derivative. It matters right now. It matters right now, sure. But it doesn't matter later on. Because again, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 0. Well, we got a slight problem here, don't we? No. No? Yeah. Do you see d theta dt in there anywhere? Yes. Yes, I do. I don't see it in there. We have dx dt dy dt. This is what we're looking for. This is what we're looking for. But we don't have dy dt. We have d theta dt. So we need to find a relationship between these two so that we can figure out what this is and plug it in here. But I can't just plug this number in. So. Here's where Sokotoa comes in. Here's what I want you guys to all think real quick. 
What d what d what do you want to get rid of? Which derivative do you want to get rid of? D y d t. Which derivative do you want to really use? Yeah. D x d t and d theta d t. I've got d x d t. Okay. Just oh wow! I get it. Not x one. The reason why is because we don't have we don't have d y d t. The problem starts d y d t would be the rate. Dy dt, why isn't that moving, would be the rate at which it moves up and down the wall. It doesn't say the rate anywhere. It tells us the rate at which the angle changes, which is this right here. So since we have d theta dt, we need to somehow get rid of this dy dt and in its place put a d theta dt. We can't just do that for no reason. Let's show our reason now. So if we look at the triangle, we want to get rid of this, we want to use this, and we know this number. So what do I use for opposite over hypotenuse? Sine. 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 Sine theta equals, when we differentiate, we'll have cosine. When we differentiate. Sine theta equals y over 20. What we're doing here is this. We can either solve for y, plug it in back up here and redifferentiate, or differentiate this solve for dy dt and plug it in there. Isn't that get messy in the yeah. a little bit? Differentiating this one, let's see. Negative cos. Not really. Is it differentiating of sine is negative cos. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do both ways. We're not going to need cosecant because when you differentiate cos, it a sine becomes cosine theta d theta dt <laughs> equals <laughs> No, <laughs> it never you happened. You say negative, negative code, code, and you write positive code. Sorry. Because it is positive code. It's positive. I said yeah. negative? Sorry. Like it never happened. It didn't happen. So cosine theta d theta dt. Derivative of y is just 1. Okay, so this becomes 1 over the 20. Derivative of y we need dy dt. So take a look, people. If I solve for dy dt, it'll have a d theta dt. Simply plug it in over here. Okay? And then we'll multiply the two y and do all of our work like that. Okay? Now, yes, multiply 20, so bring the 20 up. The other way to do this problem is this. Bring the 20 up initially. Put the 20 right here. Take this part and replace that y right there with it. And then differentiate. You'll get the same answer either way. Because when you differentiate 20 sine theta, you're going to get 20 cosine theta. Which, take a look. Doesn't this become 20 cosine theta anyway? Yeah. So it's the same thing. So whether you differentiate after or before, no difference. Let's keep going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this 20 up over here, put the 20 there, get rid of it, and now I'm going to replace dy dt right here with this entire rectangle in area. So 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals, sorry, 20 cos d theta dt equals zero. Now, Karen, what are you noticing? You know, you don't know y. I don't think you know x either. Do you know y or x actually? Does it give us any lengths for y and x in this problem, people? Let's go take a look at the top. It says it decreases by two degrees per second. How fast is the bottom moving when the ladder is thirty degrees? When it's thirty degrees. Thirty, sixty, ninety triangle. You got twenty. What? You got twenty. If this is a thirty degree angle, if this is a thirty degree angle, this is going to be ten. This is going to be ten radical three. Remember, it's x. Uh, it's two x x x radical three. You know what? You forgot to destroy triangles. Who cares? So Katoa. Let's do that. So I want to know. <laughs> say you forgot special right triangles. You don't need them. And they come from Sokoto. So take a look here. Theta was given as 30. Theta was given as 30. So clearly, I can plug that in right there. I know d theta dt. I'm solving for dx dt. So I need x and y still. Just redraw your triangle and solve for x and y. Look at your triangle. Your triangle is x, y, 20. That was the triangle from the very beginning. You know theta is 30 now. Use Sokotoa to find x and y. Everybody can do this. Again, again, first of all, by the way, what should I convert this to? So before I plug that in, please just plan for 6. If 
But for this part, for this part, if you want to find out what x and y are, and you know this 30 here, you can write your, your oh, yeah. trigonometric functions. Yeah. We know the sine of 30 equals y over 20, or y simply equals 20 sine 30, or 10. Like, remember before I said 10? Yeah. That's where that comes from. Okay. So this becomes 10. I don't need it anymore. Y is 10. So 10 is going to go in right there. Again, how come? I move the 20 up. Sine of 30 is 1 half. 20 times 1 half is simply 10. That's the y value. And if you remember special red triangles at this point, it's 2x, x. That makes sense. x is now 10. This is double that. This is x radical 3. So I'll tell you now, x will be 10 radical 3. But you know what? Let's solve it anyway. If you want to find x, use cosine. Cosine of 30 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 20. Move the 20 up. Cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. We're going to have 20 times radical 3 over 2. Take a look. 10 radical 3. Okay? Again, so if you remember your special right triangles, you see how much time you save? I gave you guys those answers in like a second. This takes you another 30 seconds to do this. Okay? Time is very, very important. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yes. D theta dt, we know. It's negative pi over 90 radians per second. Let's take a look at the equation that we have remaining. What was d theta dt from the beginning? Negative pi over 90 radians per second. Okay? And at this point, it equals 0. Just solve for dx dt. It's algebra now. Think of dx dt as a variable. Think of dx dt as just x, some variable. Move everything over, multiply all this stuff, subtract it over here, and divide. What do you get for dx dt? What kind of an answer? A, a, a length answer. A regular answer. Radiance no. over time. Okay, distance over time, good. dx, distance over time. What, what is it? Y. Why? <laughs> the ladder's here. What's the ladder doing? Which way? What, what happened? Down. Down. Why is it going down? Okay. The angle was 30, right? The angle was 30. After one second, the angle is 28. After two seconds, the angle is 26. That's what two seconds or two degrees per second means. Yeah. So if this angle is getting smaller, the only way the angle gets smaller is for this to dip down. Yeah, because it changes okay. from the height of the Now, angle. But what I want you to notice is, remember the day I was like, you often see a negative sign when things are coming closer to each other? When the distance is getting smaller? The distance is getting smaller. The distance between them will be getting smaller with the negative sign there. This dx dt just indicates that our x distance, this position, is getting more negative. More negative, okay? Negative so it's left. actually moving that way. Mm -hmm. Here's the hard part, and I'm going to go back to the solution in a second. But X really represents a position in time. Here's the wall. If dx dt is negative, it means that X is moving this way. But what's happening to this distance, guys? It's getting, it's getting bigger. What does that make you think of? It's positive. No? What did we do recently that makes you think of this? Optimization. Okay. Um, we use it in optimization a little bit, but not much. What, what thing, what thing, think back a long time ago when we had on the midterm. What thing, when it gets more negative, something else keeps increasing? Speed. Speed and velocity. What? Again, take a look, watch. How do you relate that? It works, trust me, listen. Dx dt, dx dt was negative, so it means that this movement... Come on, listen. This guy is moving in the negative direction. So its derivative will be negative. But the position, or the distance, the overall distance, the absolute value of the displacement from physics, whoever has physics, distance is absolute value of displacement, just like velocity and speed have absolute value relationship. So the distance is increasing, even though the position 
is decreasing. It does that every once in a while. I don't know what it is. I have to wait. Again, the position is moving this way. So the position is decreasing. Therefore, the derivative is negative. But the gap is increasing. It's just like velocity. If I'm in reverse in my car, okay, and I start speeding up in reverse, my speed increases, but my velocity becomes more negative. Same thing. The position is becoming more and more negative, but the distance is getting bigger. Okay. Same exact thing as velocity. <laughs> okay, I didn't even realize that until just now. That's why, to me, it was like, wow. If you notice this stuff, bring it up during the prompts. <laughs> do, do we know we get here? Does it, does it matter we solve? Can we all solve this? Okay, think you, really? Come on, so, move over. Divide by. Think of this as a variable. Some box, okay? Sorry, right, next one. Five and what was the other one? trying to do Google you know what they're trying to do um, what they're trying to do is link all of your accounts and I'll show you guys a quick shortcut in case you want to see this. if you saw uh, mr. Carter yeah if you go to google.com but you don't go to Google and you type in slash uh, I'm sorry slash dashboard here's what it does for you if you have a Google account it will load once you log in Okay. One policy, one Google experience. What they're trying to do is put all the Google products into one Google thing and one privacy policy. So it makes it easier, actually. It's actually a good thing that they're doing. I know a lot of people are complaining, but I watched like a 30 minute video the other day about this. It was really good. So, Google Dashboard, once you like, accept that, this is what Google Dashboard does. It has all of your accounts. So your profile, it has your phone. So I have an Android phone that's on there. I turned Google Buzz off a while ago. There's my Google Calendar. GBCR, student government calendar. Like there's a lot of stuff. Everything that you've ever done that's through Google is all the CASAs in there, your sites. I have a few Google sites. You want to see one of my sites? Sure. I have one site. Is it mr.how.com? Oh, wow. um, what it is? What it is? It's a site I created when I was in grad school. I had to make an electronic portfolio. I had to make an electronic portfolio where people could read my resume, my philosophy of education. It's all attached. They're all documents that are attached. Okay, so it's just this is how I handed in my final project in my class. What does your dashboard look like? Your dashboard simply just looks like this. It's just all of your stuff. Yes. And it links YouTube also, I think, yeah. YouTube's the other one. Which, by the way, people, notice. If you guys notice, under, I've been using YouTube for videos now. Karen voted. Thank you, Karen. I don't think anybody else did. You voted? Ah, thank you. I didn't see that one. I put a, I put a poll up on Facebook and said, should I continue using Vimeo or switch over to YouTube now that I figured out how to use YouTube? And YouTube's a lot smoother. Vimeo is choppy. Okay, so if you ever want to see any of the videos, so if you look up, if you say you link to one of my videos, you're going to see under the videos from all the things that I've loaded, and this is recently. You'll see all my Algebra 2 stuff in here also. There's physics, which is impulse. 
So if you're ever lost and you want to see the actual site and you just pick one of the videos, you can just click on my channel and then see all the other videos from the other ones. So any old videos at all from our class? But this only starts, I only started doing this on the 24th. So this is all there is. Everything else on Vimeo for the year. Okay? I'll show you guys have an idea. But I think YouTube is much better as far as the streaming goes. Yeah. First thing, um, do I need to keep this open? You can make free agents go to work. You can make free websites off of Google. Um, yes, Google Sites. Go to Google Sites, free. Very easy to use. And, and second thing, uh, the problem about that is that if I hack into like. It's already given. If I hack into your email, I can hack into like all your other stuff because they're all well, together. And that's absolutely right. 100% right. Nobody already has my password now. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, you're not going to have my password. I'm just saying. It's a random combination of letters and numbers that I created like two years ago. Are you sure that they're random? Nothing's ever random. You're right. Nothing is random. It's random to everybody else. Me, it might not be random. I use a random number generator. It was a letter of the thing. I did. You know what a random number generator is? Yeah. It's a machine that picks up numbers. It literally picks up random numbers. But it's not really random anymore if you think about it. It's in patterns. It shows numbers. How's it random? It shows numbers. If I if I use a random number generator, it generates a number between zero and nine, so randomly. Based numbers. on that, based on that number, <laughs> I then found letters in the alphabet. So say my random number was this. B, B D. Yeah. I don't know what seven is. What I did was this. <laughs> I made some of them letters and left some of them as numbers. Not telling you which ones, but some of them are letters, some of them are numbers. For the ones that are letters, I used. I use either that letter in the alphabet, but for some of them, like the 12 here, I use the 12th letter in the alphabet sometimes. Right. So I kind of mess with it a little, but I use the random number generator. I'll make it algorithm. It is random. I know you can argue that computers aren't really random, and in the end, they actually have a pattern. Sure, they exactly. do. Exactly. There's patterns. I mean, it's not really like... I understand, like, guys. Like what I'm saying, Let's go back to calculus. It's like when I so, play Yu-Gi-Oh! Online. It's not random. Like, if you, the, you really have to know that. <laughs> yes, because I hate the system online. Problem eight. Yeah. We have. <laughs> Water being poured into an inverted circular cone. Everybody, please draw an inverted circular cone. Two lines with an ellipse. That's all it is. Again, if you can't draw like me, please draw two lines. I mean, I can't draw. Not draw like me, but if you can't draw, comma, like me, I can't draw. Draw two lines and ellipse. <laughs> Oh, she thought I was on you guys. That was funny. I wasn't. So, water is poured into the cone with a base radius of 12 feet. Now, where is the base for this cone? At the top. At the top. Oh my God. The base of a cone is the circular portion. And clearly, there's no radius down here. The radius is zero down here. So the radius is 12. We're told that the height is 10. Now that we've done this enough, now that we've done this, everything is, by the way. Really? You know why? What? Now, let me explain. Is it because of, like, <laughs> <laughs> the, what? the reason, I know. The the problem problem is, problem. But, but these are important things, guys. Learning options? this is not as important as what I'm talking about. Okay? The real reason is that when you, when you study engineering, you're not going to actually model things the way they look. For example, if you have, like, a giant tank, and it's a tank that has an annular radius, which means it gets smaller, they model it as a cone. It's modeled that way. So the shape of the tank might not look like this. The shape of the tank might look like the cross section is like this, then it gets smaller of a cross section, then it gets to a small pipe, and it might look like that. Doing the differential equation on that is extremely, extremely difficult. So they model it with a linear function on each side as a cone. You model in physics. So the reason we keep using this is because when you have any sort of fluid flow and it comes to some sort of a spout or some sort of an exit flow where the flow will come out of here, it always comes to an annular point or some sort of a tip. So that's why the cone keeps coming up over and over again. Even though a cylinder is just as good an example because a lot of things are shaped like cylinders, the giant water tanks you see, and then they have spouts. Think about a Gatorade container. You know the giant Gatorade jug? We could bring the Gatorade jug up here Open up the spout, let it run, and solve the problem by the hand, and see it at the same time. <coughs> but if you were doing okay, that's what I, I like to do that stuff, but not until after we take the exam. We have more time. It's a little more time consuming. But when you do like that, you don't need to use a circular like the cone. You don't need to because it is correct a because it's a cylinder, and we don't have to model it. Yeah. But for shapes like this, where do you see shapes like this? Anybody know? A key. <laughs> <laughs> but a key is not fluid flow. Something with fluid flow. A funnel right away, of course. A funnel. 
Either of these, yes. Uh, Where else? Pipes. Pipes. Piping yeah. systems. Look in, look in your house. At some point in the next few weeks, look for like an old piping oh, system. You're going to see you'll have giant diameters that are diameters like this. Now, this is round, okay? The cylinder. The cylinder coming in like this, and then suddenly the cylinder gets smaller, and then it gets smaller. It increases what's called the pressure head on the object. The pressure head is the amount of pressure in the system at different heights. That's how engineers run fluids. So if you've ever heard of like um, hydraulic systems that pump fluid flow that are based on gravitational hydraulics, they use gravity to apply a lot of pressure on the object, and then you just open a spout, and it all comes pouring out. If there's not enough fluid, the pressure goes down, right? There's not enough fluid, it doesn't push hard enough. Just like the Gatorade jug, at the end, what do you have to do? Open it. Tilt it or open it, right? If you just keep pouring and there's only a little level of water, is it going to actually pour out? No. No, it's not going to drain out. It'll sit there. You need to put a little pressure on the opening. So you have to tilt it so that the water leans on the opening so that there's pressure. Okay, so this is the same idea. But that's why we keep using cones. Okay, that's why the AP Calc exam uses cones over and over. Now, back to the problem itself. We have 12 foot radius, 10 foot height. The water level is rising. Somebody raise their hand and tell me what they think this is. The water level is rising. Raising your hand. I, I'm going to call on you, though. Don't just raise your hand and talk. Oh, right. The height over on dx. Good. dt, not x, equals? Equals to d. Is it positive or negative, Kenny? Um, negative. Well, rising, but positive. positive. Sorry. That's all right. You corrected yourself. Notice. Rising, going up, thus it is positive. Again, the water level, the water level is represented by H. So the water level is rising. The water level is changing. That's what that means, literally. Okay, it's changing at a rate of two feet per minute. When the water is three feet deep, and so they're telling us H is three now. And it says, how fast is the water being poured in? I don't know. Water being poured in is what? Is it height, radius, or volume? Volume. volume. So the problem is saying, what is DVDT? What is DVDT? Now, to do this problem correctly, we can do this two ways. We can use our equation, differentiate, then sub in and make it a little messy. Or, or we could first start by writing a relationship between R and H. And we've seen this several times now. Look at R and H. Based on, remember the initial conditions, the beginning of class? We had 50 and 100. It became 50 out of 100 or 1 half. So if you want to know what the radius is, six fifths where are you getting 6 fifths from? 12 and 10. Okay, 12 and 10. So you put 12 over 10, H. Remember, remember every time, guys, the radius is just its number over the height's number times H. It follows the same pattern. Where does this come from again? Ratios. Ratios. Very good. Or proportions. Same thing. Why are there ratios now? Even the harder question. Where do the ratios come from? Triangles. Similar triangles. Absolutely. Awesome job. Again, similar triangles. If you draw a length there, draw a length there, draw a length there, all those triangles are similar. They're just getting larger. So this comes from similar triangles. Now, this helps us because when I write the equation, one-third pi r squared h, I don't care about r. I'm given h. I'm trying to figure out dv dt given dh dt, so I don't want r. So plug in this function for r, please. Again, I don't want r before we differentiate. If you differentiate earlier, you're going to have a dr dt. Then you have to differentiate this to get dr dt. Then plug it back in. Too much work. Differentiate after. So here, remember parentheses around 12 tenths h before you square. Again, remember the parentheses. Well, should we square now so we can get rid of it? Yes, absolutely. Square and make it all one thing so you don't have a product rule. That would be a product rule right now. But clearly, it's going to be h cubed, which will make it a power rule. A lot easier. So we plugged in there. We got v equals one third. Sorry, by the way. Christian's right. Six fifths, write it as, not 12 tenths. Reduce. He's absolutely right. Pi, 36 over 25. H squared, H. When you okay. It's HQ. And I'm going step by step, but if those of you want to continue yeah, to jump know. ahead, you can. Getting, like, Sorry. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to simplify all at once. Twelve. A third of tw 36 is? Twelve. Good. So this cancels. 
Very good, Ken. Uh, Ken Terry. Uh, You're stuck in my show. Sorry. <laughs> Again, this was one third. This was 36 over 25. 36 over 3 is 12, really. These reduced to 1 and 12. Again, where did all this come from? We had this formula. We subbed in for R with the equation from above. We took the derivative. Well, we didn't even take the derivative. Sorry. And we just kept simplifying. Now, now we differentiate. GV over GV. No product, guys. Yeah. Look at the variables only, please. Look at the variables only. Two of them down. It looks like there's two of them, right? And if there was R and H, there would be a product rule. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Forget the product rule. Sub in for R. Use it this way. Okay? Again, every time do this, you're done. Plug in your numbers. H was given. H is not the initial, though. What was H given as his problem? Ten. I mean, three, I think. I think it was three, yeah. Three for H and two for DHDT. Let's take a look. It's possible. When you do these problems in engineering, do you do all the variables? Until you have to actually plug in, yes. Yeah, Always. Isn't it so you have different situations? That's exactly right, Kenny. That's exactly right. Again, you want to solve with variables so that you can plug in any scenario. Yeah. I could say, oh, you know what? You know what, Kenny, let's elaborate with what you just said because that's a great statement. Here, when you multiply through, we end up getting here <laughs> 27 uh -huh. times 2 is 54. 54 times 12 over 25. Anybody 54 times 12 over 25? 54 times 12 over 25. Yeah, can we reduce that to a common fraction on the calculator? Yeah, no. Because this is 12. This comes out to be 54 here. Nothing here? 54 oh. times 12. Oh. Enter. Divide by 25. Math, enter, enter. Convert to fraction. Any, any reduction? Yeah. Over? 25. So there's no reduction. Okay, that's what I meant. Thank you. Now, what are my units for volume, everybody? Cubed. cubed, always. And we're in feet. So it's feet cubed. And my units for time or minutes in this problem? Where? Volume is cubed. Time is linear, always. Okay, squared when it's acceleration. Meters per second squared. Now, here's what I want to indicate. Is the cone filling up or is the cone empty? Filling up. How come? Positive dv dt. The volume is changing in the positive direction. So it's gaining water. It's gaining volume. Now, here's where Kenny's suggestion comes into play, and I really appreciate this. Look. Look right here. This is the formula that we can use always. The algorithm, if you will, or the function. Now, if I wanted, if I wanted the volume to go up at a rate of, I don't know, 10,000 feet cubic, cubic feet per minute. I would plug in a 10,000 here and just figure out what DHTT needs to be if I know the height. So I can find out this one now. If I know this, I can solve this. If I know this, and I know this, I can find at what height does that occur? At what height does it occur that the volume is changing at this rate and that the height is changing at a rate of 2? At what height is it? Well, the height happens to be 3 because we knew that. But you could always solve for H. So given this equation right here, you can know these two and solve for H. You can know these two and solve for DHDT. You can know these two, like we knew, and solve for DVDT. That's why we solve like this. Okay? All right. For homework tonight, uh, actually, we have class after school. Let me just quickly give you like a two-minute intro to what class is going to be like after school. The topic is linearization. Linearization. I feel like my handwriting is worse as the day goes on. First period, it's really neat. Third period, it's pretty neat. Then I get to calc and I'm learning so much that it's just. <laughs> or I'm trying to cover more material with you. No, I think it's this. <laughs> so, linearization. Who remembers local approximation of linear things from the beginning of the year? Wait, what? The very beginning of the year. We talked about if you have a curve and you zoom in on it enough, what does it look oh, like? Line. Okay, remember this whole thing? Yeah. And I was like, we didn't have an assessment and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. So, if I pick this point right here and I draw the tangent line, 
Okay? I draw the tangent line. What I'm going to notice is between here and here, the cubic function and the tangent line are identical, aren't they? Again, and I use the word identical freely because they're not, obviously. They look identical. But in between the region A to B, in this region, the tangent line and the cubic function are pretty much the same. We're going to prove today after school how you can figure that out and how you can use that. Because when we learned this, it was with limits, if you remember. Because yeah. we kept on looking at the limits as you zoom in. Now that we know derivatives, we can actually do it. That's why we stopped with limits. We didn't go any further there. Now we'll actually approach this. Okay? Cool.